Hey, good evening, New Life Church. It's good to be with you uh, on this evening. I kind of plugged in here in my office and I just wanted to share an encouraging word to you and just talk to you a little bit about uh, this series we're in. And so, as I said to you last week, we're in this uh, three-week series that has five sermons in it. And uh, and we're so we're doing a couple of Wednesday nights. So this is first Wednesday night. So thanks for joining us and for jumping in. <coughs> And uh, so I look forward to just opening the word. I don't have any special music or things like that or any special songs tonight, but just to open the word. So this shouldn't take too much of our time, but I just thought it would be encouraging to walk through this series together and just have something in the midweek. I hope it's a word of encouragement to you. I hope it's encouraging. I hope it gives you a chance to uh, to dive into God's word together with me. And so that's kind of what we're doing. Before I do that, I just wanted to share a couple things with you. First of all, for those of you that have been participating with our capital campaign and heard me talk about the, all the work that's being done in our sanctuary, it's so exciting. I'm so excited to, to share with you about that and to have you see it. In fact, if you want to and you, you're up to it, put a mask on and swing by the church and just uh, poke your head into the, uh, into the sanctuary. We'd love to just kind of get you caught up on what's happening and what we're looking at. And we have the sample chair that we're getting for our chairs and the painting is going up this week. If there's one or two of you, there's about half, they're almost halfway done with the wall of painting the wall. So if you want to help with that, let us know tomorrow because they're going to try to finish up maybe tomorrow. So if you're willing to jump in and help, that would be great. And then uh, we're looking to get the carpets done after that. And, uh, and then the chairs will come with us. And so this Saturday, uh, our our team, there's a team of folks that I put together that is going to help us with a re-entry plan. And so we are beginning to make plans to come back together. How exciting. So, so we are looking to do it in phases. So what is the right thing for us to do as we look at our church and all the people in our church family? How do we honor our leaders, honor our government, honor our city leaders, as well as begin to look at what would be appropriate for us and make the right decisions for our leaders, for our church board to, to say, yeah, that we're comfortable with moving back in these phases. So probably looking at a couple of phases, meaning phase one that we'll, we'll gather together for worship, just limited, probably no children's ministry to start with or youth ministry, but gather together for those that are, are willing to come and, and be a part of that in phase one. And then we'll phase in the different levels rather than just starting church out exactly the way we've always done it. That's probably not going to happen. So we'll probably do it in, in steps in phases. And so be watching for that. We'll keep you very much informed, but that's happening. And the capital campaigns happen. If you want to give to that matter of fact, it's so exciting. The first three days, since I mentioned that on, uh, on Sunday, we have uh, about $8,000 that have come in so far. So isn't that exciting? So praise the Lord for that. I know there's there's other of you that are going to continue to give. And so you can do that right online or you can drop by your gifts here at the office. And so let's continue to give. That's just going to help us and raise the dollars to help us to reach our guests and reach our neighbors for Christ. And, and so these are great steps for us. And I think you'll be so pleased with uh, what we're doing and what's moving forward with. You'll just absolutely love it. It'll be such a great time, great celebration when we gather back together. The other thing I wanted to tell you about, first one was the capital campaign and re-entry and things were moving forward. The second thing I wanted to tell you about was our this Sunday night. It's Memorial Weekend, but this Sunday night at five o'clock, we're doing a live service called Hymns and Praises, Hymns and Praises. And so Darren and the and the worship team is going to be leading us in some music, some beautiful hymns and some classic hymns, some, some songs that will just touch your heart. It'll be such a great night. And I just need your help for that. I'd love to hear some praises, some praises of God's people. And so I'd love for you to text me or email me. Uh, if you want call, I can write it down. But I'd love to hear the praises of God's people. So if you've got just a, a word of just thanksgiving to God, would you just text me or email me uh, and if you, or call the church office and uh, get that information? I'd love to hear from you. Just a praise to say, I'd like to praise God because. And so let's hear some praises of God's people. And then throughout the time, we're going to be about an hour, start at five o'clock, about five to six. We're going to be doing some songs, reading some scriptures, and I'd love to be able to share some of your praises uh, to our people. I just think it'll be so encouraging to hear the praises of God's people. So that's this weekend, this Sunday night at five o'clock. 
So yes, we have a Sunday night service this week. Woo! So anyway, that'll be a lot of fun to be able to uh, to share that together. And you can just watch that online just like you watch it on Sunday morning. And we'll also have a Sunday morning service as regular. So we'll have our regular Sunday morning online service, but we're adding the Sunday night as well. So anyway, that's what's happening this weekend. And I look forward to being with you. These are obviously interesting days, right? But you know, the reality is, is our faith is not gone. Our church certainly is not gone. Our church is alive, alive more than ever. And so I'm so excited about that and so excited about what God's doing and how he's maybe even shifting our hearts to, to what's next for us as we move forward to try to reach uh, people for Christ and be encouraged and make disciples that make disciples that make disciples. So I'm ready to continue to take steps toward Christ, and I hope you are too. Well, I want us to spend a little time in the Word uh, together. Uh, again, know that I miss you. I, I, sir, I sure miss you. I miss being together as a church family. And so in this way, it's just a simple way for us to connect together. And so thanks for taking some time. Uh, to be together with me. But if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. That's where we're going to be in. Sorry, I got the sun coming through my windshade. So I got a little bit of the sun on my uh, <laughs> on my face. I just noticed that in my camera. Uh, and I got my earphones on so you can hear me with my microphone. So in case you're wondering why I'm wearing those silly things. But anyway, I want to talk to you about, so we've been, we're in the series. We started it Sunday about two roads. That's the title of the series, Two roads. And and so we have two roads that we, we can take. It's almost as if you can just picture a, a, a road that's leading to a fork in the road. And there's a signpost up ahead. And the signpost points two different directions, right? And so there's two roads for you to take. Which one will you take? Which one will you go? And we started this week kind of using the, the uh, aspect of infection versus immunity, right? Infection or immunity. That's the two roads that we talked about. And we, we're in the book of James, James chapter one, verse uh, 22 through 24, which just simply begins to talk to us about the, the, the aspect of God's word and how we, we are not just to be hearers of his word, but be doers. And so this aspect of two roads, I want to be in Affected by God's word, right? That I talked about the upside down kingdom, that, that it's just, if we, we think about this idea of infection and all the things that are going on around our world in the kingdom and a kingdom mindset, we want to be infected by God's word. We want it to so change us and, and so infect our lives in such a way rather than taking the second road that builds up immunity and that I have immunity to the power of God's word in my life. I've heard God's word but I'm just not a doer of it. And so it's just easier for me not to, to be a follower and doer of God's word because I've built up this immunity. So immunity or effect, infection, infection or immunity. And so I think uh, what I think God's word is teaching us is let's not be hearers, let's be doers, let's be infected by God's word, amen? So that was the beginning of the series. And, and today I just am gonna talk to you about uh, the same concept of two roads, right? So here we are. We stand in the middle of the road. Here's the signpost. One says to go one way. If you follow the first sign, you go this way. You follow the second sign, you go that way. And so what is it today? Today, I kind of stole a phrase out of a great book, a great resource. In fact, you can find this resource in our Right Now Media. And I would encourage you to go on Right Now Media and watch and watch this uh, aspect of the book. I am, uh, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan is the, is the title of it. And I stole this, this concept because I've just been so gripped by it. And it's, been, it's such been encouraging, encouragement to me over the years. It's been around for a little while. But this book just talks about the fact, are you a fan or are you a follower? There's the two roads, right? So as we think about our spiritual life, are you a fan or are you a follower? Are you a fan of Jesus? Are you a fan of, of the ways of Christ? Or are you a follower of Christ? And there's a distinct difference. There's a distinct fork in the road that leads us in those directions. You know, my son and I, uh, Benji and I, love sports. Some of you know that. And we love watching basketball is one of our favorite sports to watch together. And, and, uh, and so we're Laker fans. And so this, this not, I, I'm not saying this for debate or anything like that, but, but, uh, but we will debate you about that. But anyway, we're Laker fans, but it's funny these last couple of years, you know, last few years, if you know anything about basketball and sports, so that, which some of you may not, and that's okay. 
but I'll kind of uh, school you up a little bit on this, right? I'll kind of help you because over the last few years, the Golden State Warriors have been like the team to beat in basketball, right? And so over the last couple of years, I've been like, hey, I love the Golden State Warriors. It's fun to watch. And my son, Benji, has been giving me a really hard time about like jumping on the bandwagon of the Golden State Warriors. They're saying, you know, you're just, you're not really, you're just a fan of, of the basketball, right? What? You're, you're not really a true Laker fan. You're not really a true Laker. And you know what he was saying to me? I thought I was thinking about this week as far as this idea of fan and follower, right? He'd really give me a hard time and be like, if you're really a Laker fan, you would not like the Warriors. You would not like, and I'm like, I just like watching them play. They're a good team. And I like, it made sense, right? You know what he was saying to me? He was saying, dad, when it comes to being a diehard fan of this team, of our team, are you just the fan? Are you a real follower of that team? Right? And it kind of, he's saying, listen, you can just cheer all you want, but when push comes to shove, you all of a sudden be a fan of another team or a fan of another team. Right? And, and it's like that, that, which is okay, especially when it comes to sports. But when we begin to translate that same idea into spiritual life, it really becomes something that I'm just afraid. Here's what I'm afraid of. And this was, boy, last several months, God's been laying this series on my heart because I I just am afraid that in the church, we have a bunch of people who are in the stands as fans of Jesus and not really followers, right? So as a a follower of the basketball team, Benji would, would be like, listen, I will talk people into telling you why this team is the better team, why you would, should follow. This is, I've been sticking with this team through thick and thin. I'll, I'll, I will kind of give my left arm for this team. You know, I'll just, I'll do it with some people like that doesn't make any sense to me, which is coincidentally the same about faith, right? For some people outside the church are like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Why you guys would, would give you, you would actually die for your faith. No way. I would never be that committed to that, right? Fan or follower. And again, as we think about our faith, um, I think about this at, at, at same exact thing. And I start thinking about the fact, here's a question for you. How would you define your relationship with Christ? I talked about how Benji defines his, his relationship with his ba- favorite basketball team and how I kind of was a little more of just a fan of the team, obviously, and, and my allegiance, if you will, right? But when it comes to our spiritual life, here's a good question for you and for me, right? How would you define your relationship with Christ? It's another way of saying, like, what road are you on, right? What road are you on, fan or follower? How would you define your relationship with Christ? Are you a fan of Christ, a fan of faith, a fan of Christianity, or a follower? Because, see, those two roads are distinctly different. You know, there's one word that, that I think so clarifies this very concept more than any other word that I could find. And that word is death. Death. Whoa, wait, this got heavy real quick. Wait, hold on, Pastor. This got real serious, right? Yeah. When Jesus talks about being a follower of Christ, he talks about dying to ourself. I've had the privilege of seeing, overseeing dozens and dozens and dozens of funerals over the years as a pastor. And as I oversaw them and, and preached at the service and was able to, to share and, and share their stories and talk about, there's no more definitive moment than when someone passes away to really begin to help us understand and define about where their relationship was with Christ. There's almost, there's nothing else in my opinion. I I almost said almost nothing else. There is nothing else. Because when Jesus talks about following Christ, he talks about following him. He talks about the fact of actually dying to ourself. And throughout the gospel, there, there was no aspect of being just a fan of being a follower of Christ. In fact, those who were fans of Jesus during the time that Jesus walked on earth, they typically fell away when things got too difficult, right? They were just fans. That's, that's an identifier. You know, in five different times in scripture, Jesus talks about believing in him, which is important. Believe in Christ. But do you know that 20 different times in scripture, 
Jesus talked about following him? It obviously was important to him. It obviously was, was something of a value for him. That yes, believing in him is important for salvation. But really what he's desiring for each and every one of us as we face the signpost and the fork in the road is not just to be a fan that says, but says, will you follow me? Will you truly follow me in my ways? Let me kind of help define this as we kind of wrap this up. The road number one, the fan road, if you will, I think truly admires Jesus, truly admires Jesus. Man, I went to church. I carried my Bible. Uh, I even watched online church. I mean, I did. I, I, but, you know, when it came to even talking to my friends and such, and if you were to ask, and I, I guess I could just say, just ask you personally, if, if your friends right now, your coworkers, if they were, if you, if I were to go and ask them about your relationship with them and how much you talk to them about faith and your relationship with God, and and if they said, you know, we don't ever talk about that stuff. We talk about work. We talk about going out. We talk about being with friends. We talk about work stuff. We talk, but you know, the issue of faith never comes up. I would probably say that in most cases, that that you would be describing someone who's a fan of Jesus. You see, just like my son, Benji, someone who's a follower, right? There's some inner passion that just comes out of you that I want to talk to you about this. I, there's something that I want you to know that my team is, is, is the best team, right? And when it comes to being a follower of Christ, it's, hey, I, I, want to t- I can't not talk to you about this. Something has changed me. But a fan... When the push comes to shove, when things maybe look better over on the other side, I think I'm going to kind of follow that. And I don't want to push anybody. And maybe you've even used the phrase, you know, I don't want to force anybody to believe anything. I just So I just kind of keep to myself. Listen, when it comes to being a follower of Christ, Jesus said, listen, go make disciples. And it really begins to define, just the question I asked you earlier, it begins to define the very relationship that you have. Are you a fan or a follower? Again, sometimes I wonder if our church and churches are full of, of uh, like stadiums full of fans cheering on, yes, yes. But when things get rough or things get tough, that one's when we find out a little bit about ourselves. Maybe you're saying, listen, I'm, I'm really thankful for the benefits of being a Christian. I love that I get eternal life. I get So I'm thankful for the benefits about being a Christian. But to go and go above and beyond, to do anything more, I guess I am just a fan, right? Or the second road. That's the first road. The second road is, is the road that I think Jesus calls us to. He's calling each and every one of us to. And that is that of being a follower, right? And in God's word, right, being a fan was never an option. To Jesus, being a fan wasn't even an option. Luke chapter 9, here's where our text is. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 says this. He said to the crowd, if any of you are, wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross daily and follow me. Take up your cross. Surrender everything about, die to self. Say, God, Everything about myself, I want to surrender to you and I want to follow you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right? It just takes that that idea of, of, of being just a fan. It just says that's not even an option for me, right? Followers are devoted. There's this passion that, that comes out of them that that man, they say, No, I had heard this sermon last week, and look what God's doing in my life. This is what God's teaching me. I heard this scripture. You got to hear this. This is what God, there's something about me. How can I pray for you? Man, it seems like you're going through a tough time. What can I do to to lift you up? See this difference between that. These two roads that we're talking about, fan or follower, there's distinct difference. And for me, what I want to encourage my family and for my life, I said, Lord, I want to follow you. It kind of reminds me of uh, of uh, a house, right? Where I've invited Jesus in and he's come through my into my heart, like coming through the front door, right? And, and I say, God, you, you ha- you're welcome here. But there's maybe some rooms upstairs or rooms in the back that, that I, I don't really want you to have access to yet. Right? I mean, there's some distinct difference. 
right? It kind of it's just like asking the question: Are there areas in your life that are off limits, or does Jesus have all of you? Are there rooms in your life that you say, ah, "I'm not sure I'm ready for God to have control of this area yet"? I want salvation. I love the benefits of faith, but I, boy, there's some things I still need to work on, and. I, I'm, I have things that I've had to work on in my life too. But there's been a distinct shift in my life that, that has moved from just being a fan of following Christ to saying, God, you can have all of me. Another question that follows in that same thinking is, have you made a decision to believe in Jesus or really committed to follow Jesus? Oh, I believe in Jesus. But again, when push comes to shove, when things get tough, when someone kind of like presses me on this, says, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to push. I don't want to. So God, if you're asking me to give up something and surrender or sacrifice or or give generously or do whatever that may be, I don't know. I think it helps. It begins, again, to define the relationship. That's kind of what I started us with. How's your relationship with Christ? How would you define it? You see, there's two roads. Which one are you going to follow? Are you a fan or are you a follower? And as we go through this series, I want to encourage us. Let's be infected by God's word. Let's not just be a fan of it. Let's really be a follower of Christ. Let's see, let's see what God would do in us. Let's not build up some immunity that, that when, when God's word is proclaimed, that I just kind of, I don't feel it as much. It doesn't penetrate my heart. God, penetrate me, mind, body, and soul. Penetrate me deep. I want to I live for you. There are people in our community that don't know you and surrounding neighbors. And so God, so compel me and, 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 and challenge me and convict me to want to more and more know you. I want to be a follower of yours, not just a fan. So one last time, there are two roads. Which one are you on? Which one will you head down? We can't stand still. We're having to move forward. Are you a fan or are you a follower? Let's pray. Lord, thanks for this time. I pray, God, that you will continue to convict our hearts. Help me, God. Help me to to follow you in all things. God, I want to surrender myself to you. Be totally sold out to you, God, in all that I say and do. And in doing so, Lord, would you just change me from the inside out, Lord. Continue to use me to to infect other people and to, to, to make a difference in someone's life. And that in doing so, they would say, there's just something different about that guy. I want, to, I want what he has. I, I'm interested in that. I see the hope and the joy and the peace in his life. Or for somebody who's listening here now that in her life and whoever it may be, God, that help us not just to be a fan that cheers on church and cheers on Christianity and just believes in you. But God, we want to follow you. We want to really know you. So as a result, God, you change us completely. Thank you, Lord, for what that's going to mean. And for one per- maybe one person right now that's here, that's listening right now, that you would just simply just say this prayer, God, I don't want to just be a fan. I want to follow you. I choose to follow you, God. From this day forth, I choose to follow you the rest of my life. No longer do I want to be just a fan. In your name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, listen, that can be your praise for this Sunday night. Would you send me an email or a text saying, Pastor, I don't wanna be a fan, just a fan. I wanna be a follower. And I've committed that for the rest of my life to do that. I would love to celebrate with you. Whether you've walked with Christ for a lot of years, listen, part of this requires humility and vulnerability and honesty to say, yes, that's me. I choose to be a follower of Christ. Send your praises in for this weekend. I look forward to being with you Sunday morning and Sunday night this week. And let's continue to put God's word close to our heart, right? Let's keep it close. Let's follow him every day of our life. I love you. Thanks for being with me in this time. Have a great, great rest of your week.